Throughout this year, Judy Woodruff has been examining divisions across the country. For her latest story, she listened in on focus groups in Iowa with two-time Trump voters as they talked about how they feel about the state of the nation, the divisiveness they see, and who they feel is responsible for it. A note, we've chosen not to include the participants' full names after some received harassing calls following an earlier story. This story was produced with our friends at Iowa PBS and is part of Judy's ongoing series, America at a Crossroads. I definitely think the country's headed in the wrong direction, and, and unfortunately, I think we're on that downhill slide that I'm not sure it can be turned around. That was a common feeling among the 16 two-time Trump voters we gathered recently at the studio of Iowa PBS in Johnston for a pair of focus groups led by Republican strategist and pollster Sarah Longwell. In Iowa, we have a great governor. We have great leadership. However, when you look at the country as a whole, it just seems like everybody has said the country's just going down the, the tubes. I agree with all the different uh, economics and all that, but we are so polarized that we can't come to a common ground. I mean, it almost feels a little bit like a civil war. Following the panels, I sat down with Longwell, who conducts focus groups with both Republicans and Democrats to talk through what we'd heard. But mainly the things that you hear, and I hear this all the time from Republicans, is they really feel like the country is going in the wrong direction. Yeah. Um, they want a Republican back in power very badly. In terms of um, these Republican voters and their view of how divided the country is, what came across to you the most about that? Well, everybody does think we're divided. Uh, that is clear. Uh, in the focus groups we did tonight and in the focus groups I do all the time, people are, you know, they talk about things like a national divorce or a civil war. They feel like we're at each other's throats. How many of you think we're very divided? Raise your hands if you think we're an extremely divided country. Mm -hmm. Whose fault do you think it is that we're so divided? The media. Media? Media, yes. for sure. Yes. And the they politicians. They perpetuate the hate. Mm -hmm. I mean, they do it on they purpose. Do. They mm -hmm. they have an agenda, yeah. and it is to divide, mm -hmm. and that's what they seek, and that's mm -hmm. what they're doing. That's how mm -hmm. they get ratings. That's, that's how, how they, they get, get money. Exactly, yep. because that's where the money is. And I'm curious, where are you getting uh, your information? Like, where are you, what are you watching, what are you reading, what are you listening to? I watch Blaze TV and Fox News, and I have... Um, Truth so Social, and I'm all over Twitter, and um, I watch Channel 13, NBC <laughs> all the time. And News junkie. I, I, I like to know what's going on. Ray Travis and Buck Sexton took oh over Rush Limbaugh's show. They are good. I mean, these guys, they look into things. They know things. Sean Hannity is really good also. Mm -hmm. I think I'm smart enough to understand when I'm being manipulated, mm -hmm. all right? So I will have to say is I read everything, I listen to everything, and then what goes in, what goes out, and then I just make up my own decision. I'm going to blame um, the media and also um, social media. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I think back like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, we didn't, it didn't seem so divided, and, um, and it's driven me to, you know, seek out different news sources now yeah. to get my news so I can compare, um, like, uh, Real America's Voice and Newsmax. What about you, time. Mary? So I, was, I agree with what you were saying. So social media is a huge thing, in my opinion, because you don't have a personal relationship with the people mostly online. Mm -hmm. Or, like, what I would say to you right now in person would be completely different than what I might say on social media. So it sounds like you guys mm -hmm. blame the media, social media yeah. for the division. How do you feel about Democrats in general? Generally, any time that there's a fight between two people, there's never usually one side that's like 100% right. It's always somewhere in the middle. Right. And so I'm not ever gonna say like, this side's completely right and this side's completely wrong. Do you guys have friends and family who are Democrats? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yes, mother. Yep. Yes. And how does that, how do you do with that? Is it, is it tense? Can you talk to each other? Is it, how is it? Recently, uh, spent some time with some relatives that are um, Democrat, and um, you really can't talk about um, Trump or Republicans in that house. I mean, <laughs> it's just you don't tread lightly there. My close inner circle is mostly um, like-minded. They vote Republican or pretty conservative, but outside of that, I try to avoid conversations because they're just never productive. No one's changing anyone's mind. I did hear them say that they blame the media. I also heard them say that they were reluctant 
to bring up their views with people who disagree with them politically for fear that they were they would be um, criticized, they would be called out. Yeah, I do hear this all the time. People feeling like they can't talk about their support for President Trump or can't say that they're a Republican without fear of being shouted down. Um, I, I think that both parties, uh, members of both parties, sort of feel like it's really hot out there and when you sort of wear your politics on your sleeve that it's inviting a kind of combative experience. And I think they feel like a real difference from how people used to be able to sort of agree to disagree maybe yeah. 10, 15 years ago, and now they feel like it gets really personal really fast. Another key division was over questions of faith and what it means for people's politics. Do you believe that it's possible to be very liberal, very progressive, but also be of deep Christian faith? Mm. <laughs> no. No. Mm. No. No. Tell me more. Go ahead. Um, you can't, um, you know, um, life is, well, very important. And if you're a liberal, then you are pro choice. And then you believe that it's okay to kill a baby. And I don't believe that you can believe that and be a real Christian. What do you think? I, I mean, technically, I guess you could be, but that would mean you're not, I don't know, allowing God's love to be in you as much. And stuff so I don't think that the Democrats I hate to say it like that I hate, hate to segregate the party um, they have too many yeah but what if but yeah but what if I don't feel like a girl so whatever God so God made me a boy but I don't feel like a boy and so I'm going to change that it's just a, a messing with creation. It's just it's just messing with the absolute. So when Joe Biden, I know he's he's a Catholic. Do you think that he's not Catholic? I mean, you just you, you know your original question. God is more of a God of just love. He's a God of right and wrong. Mm -hmm. He's a mm -hmm. God of truth. He's a God of righteousness. I mean, you can't be liberal and be far left on beliefs and then say, oh, I'm a Christian. Well, you can say it. That's the, that's mm -hmm. the worst thing. People do say it, mm -hmm. but they don't understand. There were strong views expressed about whether it's possible to be a Democrat, to be liberal, and have a strong Christian faith. It, it's almost a barrier. Yeah, people can be really paradoxical. They can sort of express one thing right. in, in thinking about it one way and then express um, sort of the complete opposite if they're thinking about something else in a different frame. You could hear on one hand people saying, uh, well, I'd really like us to get along more and I, I, want, um, I want us to have shared values and have these good conversations. And then you'd also hear them say, but I don't think that you can be a real Christian uh, and be a progressive. They didn't think those things were compatible. And when it came to the idea of their children marrying someone of the opposite party, feelings were mixed. Would any of you or all of you be okay if your child married a Democrat? My child did marry a Democrat, <laughs> a Democrat lawyer. Okay. It didn't go well. Is it still not going well? No, we are estranged. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, my daughters are both very liberal, which pains me, <laughs> but I support them and their yeah. beliefs and try to have conversations with them about what I believe and why I believe that way. And so, but I don't try to change them. I just let them know how I believe and why I believe that way. But if they choose to marry a Democrat, I will support them 100%. And that in itself is the root issue. And there was even some pushback to our framing of some of these questions along partisan lines. We're all made in the image of God. We're all valued by the Creator. Why are we dividing Democrat and Republican? Like my mom's a liberal Democrat, and I work in something completely different. And we have the most loving relationship. It's because I don't identify our relationship based on Democrat Republican. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the problem in the country. Yep. One of the things about doing the focus groups across the political spectrum, you know, every week now for years, is oftentimes Americans are closer on a number of things than you might think. And, and people tend to overestimate 
how different the other side is from them or at how mad they would be. And some of this comes down to the fact that we are now geographically very segregated as a country. We are, you know, uh, tend to have bluer cities and redder yeah. sort of rural areas. And so the less people talk to each other, the less they have a really good frame of reference for how somebody might actually think. Uh, oftentimes people are a little more tolerant uh, and and they they want us to get along. Like they express the fact that they would, that they sort of lament being this divided and they talk in terms of wanting America to be a place where you can talk about your disagreements yeah. and not feel like it's going to be so fraught. And so, a mixed picture from these Trump voters in Iowa. Some wish for less division and blame the news media, especially social media. And yet they have strong personal views about Democrats, are divided on having one in the family, and question if progressive politics and Christianity can coexist. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Judy Woodruff in Johnston, Iowa.